All right, a very good afternoon wherever you are watching us from my trust your afternoon is going on well welcome back again to legal thursday uh, we've been talking matters to do with law justice and legal affairs of course educating you and helping you and learn and learn new laws and this afternoon we switch gears now to a different uh, aspect of the law and talk matters to do with family laws what do you know about family laws of course earlier on i had indicated we would be having this particular discussion of course to put everything that you need to know bear on this particular session as we talk on matters and the comprehensive uh, family law we we'll also will be talking matters to do with marriage we talk about divorce we talk about uh, distribution of matrimonial property and we'll also talk about matters to do with the child custody of course if at all there is a marriage then some it comes a time there is divorce and when there is divorce there is distribution of matrimonial property as well as the child custody so that is what we'll be discussing in the next one hour as we seek to educate you and help you and learn and learn the laws that govern you. Welcome aboard. My name is Chris Sambo. Remember, this is CAC TV Partnership Week, and this is Legal Thursday as we have discussions on matters to do with law, justice, and legal affairs. And on that note, I want to welcome my guest here in studio. Uh, is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Mary Ann Nyangrima. Welcome to the program this um, uh, uh, afternoon. Thank you so much, Chris. And uh, good to see you this afternoon and so that we can have this particular discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, glad to be here. Uh, just uh, to welcome you to this particular discussion, of course, we are going to talk matters to do with uh, you know, family law, uh, an expansive law that uh, has a lot of content in it. And uh, as we were talking earlier on, it's about marriage, divorce, child custody, matrimonial property. In between, there is also the law of succession. But I uh, just want to begin at this point. Uh, what, 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 what can we define as a family, first of all, to begin under the Kenyan law? Um, well, family is a very basic unit of any society. It's a very framework mm -hmm. of any society. Now, the law does not define what a family is. Um, mm -hmm. It defines what a marriage is. Um, but in my own understanding, or if we could just basically break it down, a family is a very basic unit of, of any society. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now as we come uh, talking about family being a basic unit of any society, there is now the aspect of what we are discussing this afternoon, the family law. Uh, the Kenyan family law, what would we talk about the Kenyan family law? How is it structured? Um, the Kenyan family law would constitute the regulations mm -hmm. um, and laws that govern these basic structures, we have, uh, as we have said. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and any 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 anything that you call a family would mm -hmm. therefore need any society mm -hmm. really needs regulations and laws just mm -hmm. as you've said it's proper to have good law and order mm -hmm. yeah so the laws would include how what defines a family mm -hmm. what defines a marriage what constitutes a family and a marriage mm -hmm. it would also um because this then becomes a contract so how do you get out of this family and get into a new family mm -hmm. what happens when the family breaks down and we have to come into a new system mm -hmm. such that if one family breaks off the very unit breaks off mm -hmm. then we have to go into a new family unit so what are the procedures of going into this new family unit mm -hmm. and so on and so forth uh -huh. i think yeah. i think that is elaborate enough and uh, you've talked about you know marriage of course you've brought in the aspect of marriage we begin at this point now uh, because that is the when you talk about family law what rings in the mind of many is marriage let's begin here what does the law talk about marriage what is marriage under the kenyan law well marriage number one is voluntary mm -hmm. voluntary union of a man and a woman mm -hmm. yeah i emphasize on those aspects mm -hmm. because <laughs> there's a lot of confusion in the mm -hmm. society Perception. so voluntary mm -hmm. union man and woman mm -hmm. um and is regulated by the types of marriages that are under the marriage act mm -hmm. 2014 section 3 defines the types of marriages you know hindu islamic you have customary you have a christian marriage mm -hmm. and you have a civil marriage yeah mm -hmm. so that means that if it's a voluntary union between a man and a woman, but the registration process of it is not recognized by the law, then that does not make a marriage. Mm -hmm. Which then brings me to the issue of cohabitation, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
because you just uh, find yourselves that's what people say in the in layman terms kujipata mnajipata <laughs> um living together it's voluntary it's a man and woman but the process of it is not recognized by the law mm-hmm. the law recognizes that as cohabitation mm-hmm. and has its own framework for it mm-hmm. so marriage is a voluntary union between a man and a woman mm-hmm. and its registration process has to be in accordance with the marriage act 2014 mm-hmm. of kenya mm-hmm. yeah. and talking about it being a volu- voluntary thing of course uh, there are those marriages that um uh, are not recognized by the law uh what are some of the marriages are in their respective you know uh, description and uh, how has the law accepted them or rather allowed them to be done okay um there's something we called presumption of marriage yeah mm-hmm. under the marriage act still um presumption of marriage um would entail cohabitation mm-hmm. something that resembles the law says resembles a marriage but is not actually a marriage mm-hmm. you know hiyo kujipata so it resembles a marriage but it's not a marriage mm-hmm. so the law also makes provisions for it such that if we go into division of property and we will find that these things really interlock marriage division of property mm-hmm. and children like you said they really uh, cross borders yeah Um so if we go into division of property there's something we call the law of succession act mm-hmm. that now talks about division of property and wealth and how the law treats presumption of marriage mm-hmm. yeah and you've talked about presumption of marriage uh, uh the court can presume that you are married uh by someone even if you are not in a in a setup recognized by the law as marriage Yes, the law can for purposes of division of wealth, mm-hmm. not for any other purposes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anything that resembles a marriage is not a marriage mm-hmm. if you read the marriage act. Mm-hmm. But if we are talking about the law of succession act which is where division of property falls, then the law can presume that you're marriage. There's a very popular case like that called the Hortensia Wanjiko case mm-hmm. and that really explains the concept. Mm-hmm. So for purposes of division of wealth you can be presumed to be married mm-hmm. but if it's strictly for purposes of marriage you know I just want to say that I'm married to this person then the law needs you to register that union mm-hmm. according to the law under the law yes. uh, and talking about presumption of marriage of course that is a very contentious uh, issue and matter when it comes to determining marriage yeah. uh, there would be a viewer there who is asking or rather wondering uh, if i'm not in any of the recognized uh, marriages under the kenyan law and um, in what circumstances can i find myself in a in a, in a setup that is a sort of a presumption of marriage uh, they, someone would be wondering uh, what setup uh, defines the presumption of marriage well we would have the setup of dependency mm-hmm. yeah um dependency where it means that you're depending on someone mm-hmm. um you're depending on someone for your well-being for example um if there are minors involved or children involved born out of this union uh, that is not that resembles a marriage but is not a marriage then the law can presume you to be married to this person mm-hmm. such that when we come to purposes of division of wealth especially after death that's that's where it arises mostly if we come to division of wealth then your wealth is divided based on the units yeah mm-hmm. So the law will presume you to be married if it can be proved that for example you have a child with this person you are taking care of this person even because the law does not recognize illegitimate children or children born, born out of wedlock mm-hmm. um the law of succession or the law of division of property looks at legitimate children it says illegitimate children it also says adopted children mm-hmm. so that's why i say dependency So number one, you could be having a child outside your strict the strict sense of marriage who is your child mm-hmm. or you could have adopted your girlfriend's child for example mm-hmm. if i can put it in Lemans very language. basic mm-hmm. terms yeah So uh you talking about you know uh, uh dependency and of course it raises uh, another yet another question of uh, does the law recognize polygamy and under what grounds does the law recognize polygamy Well the law does recognize polygamy we are an african society mm-hmm. and so the law needs to be in tandem with the framework of the society mm-hmm. so one of the marriages that the law recognizes is customary marriages mm-hmm. and customary unions are by their nature polygamous unions mm-hmm. yeah so the law imports customary law 
into the modern law, if I can put it that way. Mm -hmm. So a customary union is a polygamous kind of union, unlike a Christian union and a civil union. Um, again, the law of succession act, when you talk about division of property, mm -hmm. also recognizes customary unions. Mm -hmm. um, Section 32 of the law of succession act uh, um, designate, designates areas in Kenya where mm -hmm. property where if you pass away and you had property in these areas, mm -hmm. then that property would be divided based on customary law. Mm -hmm. For instance, it has Kajiado, it has Takana, it has Isiolo, a number of areas. Mm -hmm. um, so if you pass away and you have property in Kajiado, then you have a slight chance, slight chance, and I will explain why, mm -hmm. of arguing your, that your property should go through customary law. Uh -huh. Yeah? Uh -huh. You've talked about, you will explain why. <laughs> I'll explain the slight chance. Uh -huh. Because again, if you're a foreigner, uh -huh. say you're a Kikuyu who passed away and all your properties in Kajiado, mm -hmm. you're not strictly from that community, then it can just go through the normal succession laws. Mm -hmm. But if you're a Maasai, say in Kajiado, and you pass away and all your properties there, then you can argue based on gender. Because mm -hmm. customary law in the Maasai community, gender is a very emotive Important issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I think that is, that is something that uh, uh, has been so much popular in regards, you know, to recognizing polygamy as, uh, a, as part of marriage yes. uh, and also when it comes to distribution of matrimonial property. Yes. But then I am also wondering in yet another aspect where uh, there is the legally married uh, uh, wife uh, under the law, under mm -hmm. the marriage is recognized mm -hmm. by the law, then there is... Uh, there is another wife, would say yeah. another wife, who is not under any 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 legally uh, any legal marriage that is recognized by the law. In such a circumstance, how does the law now handle the two women? Okay, um, if you're in a strictly monogamous union, mm -hmm. like you said, um, a Christian marriage, a civil marriage, if you're in any of these unions. Any subsequent union after that is invalid. It's null and void. It's not recognized. Mm -hmm. You can't be in a Christian union and then conduct a subsequent marriage with a second person still under Christian union, even under customary law. You can't. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get what I mean, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can't be married in the church and yeah. then go and do a customary, customary wedding marriage. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But for purposes of division of wealth the law is completely different mm -hmm. the law looks at dependency the law mm -hmm. is heavily based on dependency mm -hmm. which means that if this second person the second wife can prove that they have a child with you they were dependent on you then the wealth will be divided between the christian marriage wife and the subsequent wife mm -hmm. yeah uh, in that regard will the wealth be divided under uh, because this person was presumed to be married to this uh, man, or will it be distributed because of that particular child? No, you have to prove dependency. Mm -hmm. If you can prove dependency, then you have it. Mm -hmm. Because you could have a child, you could even have an adopted child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you can prove dependency, I've seen people produce MPESA receipts, mm -hmm. bank account receipts, school fees receipts to show this person was paying school fees for this person. You could even just be out of your well-being just taking care of this person. Mm -hmm. So, yes, presumption presumption will arise based on that fact of dependency. Just dependence. You have to prove that that particular person was depending on the deceased before they passed on so that you can also be recognized as part of the distribution of matrimonial property. Correct. And uh, I think that is well understood and also under, uh, I also uh, know that the viewer has been able to grasp that particular important point. But then moving forward, yeah. uh, there is also different aspects that arise when it comes to marriage in terms of, uh, you know, uh, this particular this particular man uh, was married to two wives but then when it comes to the distribution of property mm -hmm. when it comes to the distribution of property the law again isolates you see for for instance says the law says that we recognize only these children that were in this marriage legally but we cannot recognize we cannot recognize this particular other child uh, who was uh, who was not part of the legal marriage are there instances that such scenarios occur and under the law where where the law discriminates or rather would say isolates 
No, 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 no. The constitution is quite clear. Mm -hmm. uh, for fear of being, <laughs> of being repetitive, the constitution is quite clear. Um, all children are equal before the law and the Children's Act. Um, it's quite rare, extremely mm -hmm. rare, for the law to discriminate. The law actually does not discriminate. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen instances where wills have been drafted mm -hmm. and the deceased person seeks to exclude a part of, of, of these children and says, I only want the children of the first wife, leaving out the other children. Mm -hmm. That can easily be overturned in court by mm -hmm. a court order. Mm -hmm. yes. And just uh, moving forward now to yet another you know, we've talked about the marriage and its and uh, in its its aspects. Of course, we'll be moving uh, we're mo moving to yet another subject that is related to marriage, and that is divorce. But we are going to do that in a very short while, as we take a very short commercial break, and then we'll return back. And when we return back, we'll be talking about after marriage, what next when there is a divorce. We'll be uh, trying to evaluate and making you understand what is divorce and the process. Short break. And then we'll be right back after a short while. Understand that we'll be getting back to that particular break. Uh, and then we'll come back after that short break. But we continue slightly because we need to introduce that part of divorce. Uh, we've talked about, you know, marriage entirely. Uh, yeah. in regards to, you know, what happens, the process, uh, what is involved in marriage. But then uh, there comes a time when this marriage now decides it's not going to work out, but then, and then it has to, divorce has to happen. What ca does the Kenyan law define as divorce? Well, divorce is not voluntary. It does, mm -hmm. It's not necessarily vol voluntary. Mm -hmm. But have you, as you defined it clearly, it's the breaking down of, of a union completely. Mm -hmm. As opposed to separation, where separation is temporary, you know, it's just a change of location, you know, you don't live in the same house and it's, it's literally change of location, but divorce is completely, you, you go back to scratch, you can literally now contract a subsequent marriage after divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, at, at what point now, can you be able now to start seeking divorce uh, while you're in marriage? Well, the law has said three years. Mm -hmm. I've seen recent, very recent case law that is trying to overturn this mm -hmm. because the law says that, um, first of all, the law is against marriages that are, I don't know whether arranged is the right word, you mm -hmm. know, when people get together for, for an ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. You know, people decide to get married so that I can have your citizenship. Yeah? Mm -hmm. A foreigner has come into Kenya, would like to have the Kenyan citizenship. And I've seen this a lot with people in the U.S. Um, you want to have the citizenship, so you get married. A year later, you have your citizenship, your papers are okay, so you decide to divorce. And the law really is against any ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest things that you have to prove in court before you can get, um, you can get the decree of divorce. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to also prove that it's irretrievably broken down. Mm -hmm. Meaning, like, the work. issues we have are issues we can't work through. Mm -hmm. completely unworkable through mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you've talked about you know uh, having to prove or rather having to prove that uh, you indeed want this particular divorce and that uh, it should happen who, who, where does the burden lie who carries the burden of proving that uh, I ne we need to divorce or rather who is it the person that is uh, filing for the divorce or at the end of the day the person that is being accused in this particular marriage is the one now to uh, to give uh, that particular proof that yes, we need to divorce them. Okay. Um, generally, the law is that whoever alleges must prove. Mm -hmm. So if I'm the one who's gone to court, I need to annex evidence to show that um, mm -hmm. the marriage just can't work. And we rarely have issues, cases where people refuse to divorce. You know, if 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 you take somebody to court and you want a divorce from them and they refuse. The issue arises when we begin to talk about property and division of matrimonial wealth and what constitutes matrimonial wealth. Mm -hmm. That's where the issue comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think there is so much now to talk about in divorce. In that, uh, this as compared to marriage, marriage you know is voluntarily and uh, things that yeah. happen in marriage are so much voluntarily. But when it gets to divorce, this uh, uh, is something that engages the law at large and also. You know, it's a court. It's a court issue. Would say so. Yeah. Under what under what grounds can now someone be able to file for a divorce? Under 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 what grounds uh, can someone decide that today I'm going to file for a divorce? 
Okay. Um, the law sets out reasons. The Marriage Act again mm -hmm. sets out the the reasons that would would constitute um, um, would grounds that are best place for divorce. You have infidelity. You have cruelty. You have desertion for a for an unreasonably long period. You know, seven years and so on. Mm -hmm. um, failure to consummate the marriage is also a big a big reason we've seen in courts. Mm -hmm. um, violence, of course. You know, you really need to go by 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 the the specific grounds that are in the law mm -hmm. and most times the court won't go too much in to prove why you want you, you want to divorce because remember you got into this voluntarily and so most courts will not be very you know poke into the details too much mm -hmm. if i just go to court and say cruelty the magistrate or the judge sitting in that matter will not want to know you know, will not want to know the specifics. Did you report in the police station, for example? Mm -hmm. What can you prove? You literally just need to say cruelty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, 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 so you have to file for a divorce under the stipulated grounds by the law? Yes, if the mm -hmm. marriage was again registered. Mm -hmm. If you're just cohabiting, the way you get in is the way you get out. Ulijipata hapo, jitoe hapo. So the law doesn't recognize such sort of... Even if you go to court, they won't recognize anything you put across. No, now what, we, what happens mm -hmm. is, again, if there are children, then you need to figure out maintenance for these children. Oh. And so you would not go to court for mm -hmm. divorce. You would go to court for maintenance. Maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that is well, well, well put. But then someone would be asking, so now we've talked about uh, the grounds to prove divorce. So... If someone wants, uh, you know, to to file for a divorce, can we highlight the the, the process of divorce, where it begins, up until how it goes, and and where it ends? Okay, um, to file for divorce, you first of all you need an advocate. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those things. I'd not advise going to court without an advocate for sure, mm -hmm. because you definitely need pro proper guidance. Mm -hmm. The courts can be a bit intimidating, yeah, mm -hmm. for a lay person, mm -hmm. yeah. So I would definitely advise getting the services of an advocate here yeah? um, because there are documents that need to be drafted. There are things you need to prove, like I've said, there are grounds for divorce and there are grounds that would not go forward for divorce, yeah? Mm -hmm. That would make your case weaker for divorce, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, these processes in court, these procedures in court and a lot of technicalities. So I'd really advise him to um, seeking the services of an advocate. Most times it's a very straightforward process, especially if you have an advocate. Mm -hmm. You know, with drafting the proper documents, the court gives you a mention date, your advocate will go to court or you will go to court, the court will give you a hearing date, the other party has to be served, the party from whom you seek a divorce. If there are issues of maintenance or issues of division of wealth, you need to also deal with that, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So after the hearing, the court will ask you to file further documentation, you will get the divorce decree, and then... The part that people forget is that you have to file this court order for divorce needs to be filed at the ages because remember that's where you begin it mm -hmm. if you're doing a marriage, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, just just uh, trying to wonder what transpires uh, through the hearing period, what really transpires in between there, so that you can come to the end where you're given mm -hmm. the final decree of divorce. What transpires in the hearing? Well, the hearing is, is basically like any other hearing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The court just wants to hear from the person who has filed these papers. Your advocate will guide you on generally what the court will be asking for. But quite basically, what is in your documents is what you, you, give, wit you, you give witness to at the, at the hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to prove the grounds. At the hearing, you need to prove the grounds. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You need to explain the cruelty, for example. You need to explain the infidelity must not really prove go to the extent of proving the infidelity but once you come to maintenance now you need to explain why do you need maintenance mm -hmm. of a certain amount yeah mm -hmm. are you working for example so why do you need extra help anyway the, the law still says that a child knew a baba now a mama mm -hmm. so you still need maintenance now how much is what you now need to explain to court mm -hmm. yeah so now the, the court at that point now uh, relies on the child in making its decision? Sometimes it will rely on, it, again it depends on what kind of matter you're filing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You could be filing for child maintenance, you could be filing for division of wealth, mm -hmm. where the court says that if you have wealth that you've acquired jointly, mm -hmm. the court looks at um, percentage of contribution to this wealth. Mm -hmm. So it depends on all those things. Mm -hmm. yeah. And say in a, in, a, in, a, in a polygamous setup where a divorce now is, is, is set to happen, you know, for instance, you would say like uh, there is the legally married wife and then 
that is the, yet the other wife um, and then the man wants uh, to divorce one of the wives uh, can the other wife prevent that particular divorce not quite but defined legally married mm -hmm. yeah for, for, for instance you say yeah. like um, uh, in a polygamous setup uh, one of the parties single-handedly file for a divorce Okay, so say a man has two wives, mm -hmm. wants to divorce, uh, under customer union, mm -hmm. wants to divorce the second wife. Mm -hmm. Every kind of marriage is governed by its own laws, the laws by which it is registered. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have a customary union, mm -hmm. then the laws of customary marriage are what will govern, what will govern this union. Mm -hmm. So for example, this, I think in some, some tribes have, you know, refund or returning what was given, so return the cows, for example, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And there's a case that recently went to court, maybe last year, I think last year, a case like that where people had even gone all the way to the extent of getting the certificate. Because remember now there are certificates for customer reunions, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the law still has a loophole on how do you break down, how do you divorce from this person? Mm -hmm. Because you've, it's customary, but it's a bit more modernized because now there's a certificate. So that law is still is still being precedence is still being set with respect to that law. We're still waiting for jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, um, if two parties want to divorce, somebody from outside can't come to say no, don't divorce. Mm -hmm. it, because remember, it's a voluntary union between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the you, first wife can't say don't divorce the second wife. Ah, yeah, okay. and so, yeah. I think that is uh, well understood as well. And. Uh, yeah, I was I was I was reading some article and then uh, I came across you know uh, marriage annulment and you know divorce and uh, it was talking about they are two different things. Uh, is there a difference between ma annulment of marriage and divorce? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Divorce, like I have said, is the breaking down of a marriage that was entered into in a legal manner. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When you talk about annulment of marriage, annulment mm -hmm. of marriage is where a marriage is held to be null and void. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have a man gets married to a woman, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then say a year later or much later, even after the wedding, you find out that this person was still legally married to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It means that the second marriage, like I said earlier, is null and void. So mm -hmm. this, you apply to court for annulment and not for divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh -huh. The second marriage now? Yes. Uh -huh. Let me say it again, yeah? You have a man who's done a wedding today. Church, church wedding, even let's call it that in layman terms. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow, this wife finds out that this man was still married to somebody else. Yeah, They had not gone through the whole divorce process. They were just mm -hmm. separated. They didn't go through the legal process of breaking down the marriage. You can't contract a subsequent marriage if you're already in a monogamous marriage. Mm -hmm. So this second wife, this second marriage, will be. you take it to court to apply for annulment because this union is null and void. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that is well understood. Yeah. Uh, I was also trying to wonder if if at all you are in a in a in a in a, in a marriage uh, setup and then uh, there is something that occurs such as uh, you know uh, your partner has been able to say sometimes I've seen instances where someone was jailed for just five years and when they get out of well, say eight years, nine, ten, yeah. when they are out of yeah. jail, then they come back and find their wives moved on and got married to another person. And then they question like, uh, why did you do that? Like, uh, has the, is there in any way the law has put in that uh, when you get jailed, for instance, uh, that uh, someone else or rather your partner can file a, for a divorce in your absentia? In the strict sense of the word, that's mm -hmm. not that's not a ground for divorce, yeah. Mm -hmm. But remember, <laughs> remember the law says the marriage has irretrievably broken down. Mm -hmm. The law does not define irretrievable breakdown. It could be just you've stopped talking to each, or, or you just want to just people really hide behind mm -hmm. irretrievable breaking down of a marriage, yeah. Mm -hmm. So people, can, there's literally a million reasons that you can go in and couch it as irretrievable breaking down. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, I think I think then that is something to note because our, our, th- those are the scenarios that we've been seeing. You know, you find someone yeah. uh, was married, but then the partner was jailed for ten years, and they move on with life. But yeah. when the partner is out, there is the question of uh, was it done legally? And uh, if that's the case, then I think that is well understood. And now we're coming to yet another sensitive issue. Of course, uh, we've been talking, we've been touching and mentioning child custody and. Um, you know, after there's marriage, there is divorce. So when two partners or rather who had children, you know, yeah. divorce, divorce, where does the Kenyan law now put the children side in that particular marriage? Um, that's an interesting question. Mm-hmm. Um, the law generally wants to look at the best interests of a child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the jurisprudence right now, we really appreciate our courts uh, for a good job is because um, before this, um, children were belonged to the mom. It was almost automatic. Automatic. If you apply to court for child custody, automatically the mom gets these kids. Mm-hmm. But right now, the law is looking really at the best interests of the child. Mm-hmm. Where is this child most likely to be best taken care of? Mm-hmm. You know, to get the basics: food, shelter, accommodation, education, etc. Um, what was your question? My, my, my question was like uh, where where the law yes. puts now this particular child. All that has transpired, the divorce process has transpired, yeah. and then now they, their children side in that particular marriage. Yeah. Where does the law place them? Of course, you've talked about you know the law being paramount in protecting the best interest of the children, uh, but, I, but but but. Does it give them a priority in, you know, after that particular divorce? Yes, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. The law really looks at the children eh? because that's what I was telling. That's what I meant when I said that the law, um, when issues of child custody, issues of division of wealth Mm -hmm. crop up in a a divorce proceeding, Mm -hmm. that's when now everything becomes a bit complicated or a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, because the law really wants to look at where are the children most taken care of. Mm-hmm. We find, for example, in the society there is a single mom, a stay-at-home mom, and somebody working for a big corporation with a lot of... And, and, and really, let's be honest, um, to take care of children, you really need to have, to have the funds, yeah? Mm-hmm. Because there's education, you need to give them, you know, um, uh, food, you know, they need maintenance, they need a lot of things, yeah? So the law will not look at this is just the mother. They give the mother the child, mm-hmm. and the mother is a stay-at-home, a stay-at-home wife mm-hmm. um, who has no source of income, and leave the father to go. You know, just just go, and he has all the all the resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in that regard, what uh, what are, what are the the law speak uh, when one of the parents you know neglects their their children for instance you're talking about a mother not being able while the father is able but the father uh, has neglected this particular child are, are there consequences of the law and what does the law say about that yes there, there are consequences and mm-hmm. you'll find um, children courts are they are most of the children courts in the country have very level-headed and you know children minded um, magistrates and judges here mm-hmm. in Kenya um, and neglect is a very is a very big deal. Eh? Mm-hmm. Um, you have at the very basic level you have children officers. Mm-hmm. If you can't go to court, they are children officers. They are organisations that are pro children. You know, you will find even pro bono services. You don't really need to go to an advocate. Mm-hmm. You could just walk into any of the, just even walk into FIDA. And FIDA is not just for women, by the way. Even men go to FIDA mm-hmm. and kids. Um, then you have the courts themselves, yeah? And the courts really protect kids. So if you have an issue of neglect, you just apply to court, especially. The courts really work wonders. You apply mm. to court, and this you are even given a civil jail term for issues like that. Even the kids will be taken away from you and given to somebody else who, 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 who has the know-how or mm. who is level-headed enough to take care of these children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in, in that scenario, for instance, when the two parents are unable, you know, to raise the kids. What happens in that scenario? You find the father is also unable to raise the kids. Uh, the mother is also unable to raise the kids. What now uh, happens in that in that scenario? Now we have two things. We have two forms of custody. Mm-hmm. We have legal custody and we have actual custody. Um, actual custody means physical 
custody of the kids yeah mm -hmm. and then you have legal custody um, which means that you're not physically with the child but the child is under your care yeah mm -hmm. so what i've seen the courts do is give actual custody to somebody who has the ability to take care of the child mm -hmm. so for example a grandmother maternal or paternal grandmother and then give legal custody to the father or the mother so for example you find a case where kids are living with a grandma but when we come to legal custody um, say paying for school fees mm -hmm. say you know just literally upkeep and maintenance this is given to the father or the mother mm -hmm. yeah and in that in that uh, in that regard as well uh, is there any of the parents you know uh, entitled to a larger responsibility than the other no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> both mother and father have equal responsibility uh, what does the what does the law or other what, uh, what does the court look at you know when determining such a case where uh, the the father comes and says uh, I only earn fifteen thousand while well, the mother says this person earns five hundred thousand. Uh, where does that place now the, the the decision by the court in deciding custody? Okay, two things. Number one, mm -hmm. um, um, he who alleges must prove. So if you're saying you earn fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. you need to provide your pay slip, and mm -hmm. this is something we are next in our documents when mm -hmm. you're going to court here. Mm -hmm. um, number two. Again, case law has said, or judges have said, the life of a child does not stop because you're earning little or you're earning zero, Bob. Mm -hmm. I was once in court and <laughs> I remember the magistrate telling the father of the child, sit down. By the time this court session is over, call your people, changa pesa, tell them to send money for school fees because you've been in my court for too long. And I'm telling you, the children's courts are very, very serious courts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the, the children's court, uh, they, they, they decide the best interest of the child regardless of uh, the, the proceedings that are going on. Yes, best interest of the child. Mm -hmm. The child must be provided for, to be honest. Mm -hmm. The child's life should not stop, like I have said. It should not stop mm -hmm. based on whatever else is going on in your life. Your child should be at the top of your list. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and for instance, say the child, uh, while in, in deciding custody, I uh, understand that the, the child as well would have the ability to, you know, choose where they are comfortable. Uh, for instance, say a child uh, chooses the mother, mm. but in the view of the court, the mother is unable, you know, to take care of the child. They say that, you know, uh, they see the father as the person who is able to take care of the child and then wants to give him, uh, him custody. Uh, does the court has that mandate of, you know, deciding for the child that we want you to be here and not here um with respect to that the court really takes the evidence of the child yeah and mm -hmm. you'll find um children uh, giving their their witness uh, their testimony in court eh? especially children who are of age you know a ch you you will know a child who is of age you know 12 13 and above mm -hmm. um and then anyway, the law says anybody who is below 18 is a child so the court will really take keen interest on what the child has to say. Yeah, the testimony of the child is quite paramount. For specific reasons, you'll find courts that will say, no, it is fine, you want to be with your mother, but I think you should be with your father, in very limited instances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we also come you know, to the conclusion of this discussion, uh, now what happens if the court decides that um, you're going to take custody of this child but then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you end up, uh, you know, floating the, you know, the directives of the court and, you know, neglecting that child. What happens in that case? Yeah, the, the, there are very, very many mm -hmm. repercussions to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other partner can apply in court, you know. You can explain to court that this child is being neglected with reason. Sometimes the court will say they want to see the child physically in court. And you know, of course, you will know a child who is not very well kept, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I told you the instances of civil jail, yeah, um, which is very, which is a very, very used tool. Mm -hmm. And that one really, you know, slashes any parent who needs, who needs a beating, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so neglect of children is taken very seriously by the law, mm -hmm. by the courts in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. And how, how does the court now deal um, with the, you know, there's that cultural, customary, you know, set up uh, families, and then here comes, here comes uh, a family that uh, is in dispute, maybe, say, for a divorce, 
But then there is also the cultural aspect of it that, uh, uh, you know, these kids cannot be with their mother, while in real sense the court views the mother as the actual custodian, but now the culture says that they should be with their father. In that regard, does the court, you know, put in consideration the cultural and the customs of that particular community? The constitution is clear, mm -hmm. again, says that um, uh, the constitution sets out the laws that the laws that Kenyans are supposed to be guided by. And one of the laws is customary law, mm -hmm. yeah, like you've said. But the law says customary law, so long as it's not repugnant to justice, number one, is not inconsistent with the constitution. Which means this, um, which means that customary law, for all intents and purposes, will be considered only where it's not repugnant to justice. So in that instance, justice must be met. Mm -hmm. You know, the law will, the courts will really be guided by what is the just thing to do, number mm -hmm. one. Um, and also where this customary law is not inconsistent with the constitution. For example, says that the child's responsibility falls on just one parent. Remember, the constitution says that all parties are equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just looking at the at the fact that this is a self-centered process where where both parties are involved, and uh, in this in this occasion, you find that uh, both parties are dis uh, are disputing, uh, regardless of both of them having the ability to you know, raise this particular child and maybe both of them have the ability to take custody but none of them, none of them uh, has that particular ability. Now, does the court now decide, we have decided you are going to take care of this child regardless and you, you are going to do this. Does the court have that choice when now the two parties are conflicting despite them having the ability to raise this particular child? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The court honestly must force somebody to take to take responsibility for this child. You don't bring a child into this world and then, you know, begin saying I can't. No, Kurushiana, even you, you can't. No, mm -hmm. no. Custody has to be divided half and half. You'll find courts say that when it's during the school year, the mom takes the child. During the holidays, the father takes the child. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, remember, best interests of the child is the grand norm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you say best interests of the child, I also want to ask you this particular question. Uh, uh, in your opinion, in your view, and in your practice, do you yeah. do you feel that the Kenyan law has been structured in uh, uh, the Kenyan law has been structured, you know, to take uh, care of the family issues? Is our law uh, complete enough, uh, you know, to guide us in regards to family laws? There is no law mm -hmm. on earth that is complete enough. Mm -hmm. Society evolves every single day. Mm -hmm. So the law can't ever be complete enough. But I think the law has done a good job, especially with respect to children laws. Mm -hmm. the, the law does an excellent job. Because remember, it's not just the law, it's also jurisprudence. Jurisprudence means what have courts decided. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What courts decide also forms a huge part of the law. So I think the jurisprudence grows every day with the society because society is moving mm -hmm. every day. We are not static. It just keeps moving and moving. Jurisprudence has really done a good job. Mm -hmm. So what you can't find in the law, you will for sure find it in jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. No situation is unique. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in your view, uh, as you also conclude this particular discussion, uh, would you say there are some of the loopholes in the Kenyan, you know, laws in in respect of maybe you say in this particular matter that we're handling family laws would you say there are some loopholes uh, that have not been met or rather would be met for at least things to be better there are i mm -hmm. mentioned one when i talked about um division of property in the mm -hmm. areas that are designated to follow customary law mm -hmm. that's a loophole that is yet to be explored mm -hmm. um there's also the issue of the fact that now courts are online mm -hmm. Um, courts being online have introduced a new aspect. We need to move as well with the law because we have online courts, but we have a child who is perhaps joining a court session online. They've just been coached and brainwashed to say, I don't want to go with mommy mm. or I don't want to go with daddy. There's so many things that, you know, the society just evolves. As things move, if COVID comes, society moves. Mm -hmm. New things come up and mm -hmm. people find ujanja, you to, know. To bring in the... Yeah, yeah. there's always going to be a loophole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also the issue of family. You know, there's the, 
difference between a marriage recognized under the marriage act mm -hmm. and a marriage under the law of succession act yeah mm -hmm. that loophole is still yet to be fixed because i could be a wife if i read the law of succession act but if i read, I read the marriage act i'm not a wife mm -hmm. yeah so there are there many some contradiction there yes yes there is a contradiction again like i said the law can't be very seamless mm -hmm. um yes so that's why there has students, to be areas of contention th th there has to be a few gray areas mm -hmm. and this is where the courts now play a major role because mm -hmm. the the law the courts will now come in and define these gray areas and mm -hmm. say no this needs to work this way yeah. And I think that is where we are going to end up this particular discussion okay. uh, because it's been an interactive uh, session, yeah. of course, talking about matters to do with law, justice and legal affairs. And that is where we wind up this particular discussion this afternoon. Thank you so much, Miriam Nyakiringa, for making time to come to this particular discussion. Uh, you are, uh, I also need to mention that you are an advocate of the High Court of Kenya yes, and also an annex uh, mediator. Yeah. So uh, that is where we wind up this discussion my name is chris ambo and remember this is legal thursday and we'll be talking matters to do with law justice and legal affairs and shortly uh, later on we'll be coming back with matters to do with commercial law so uh, you need to stay where you are because today we are talking matters to do with legal affairs helping you and learn and learn new laws and also giving you the room to be able to ask any question that you want you can be able to send in your messages your question will be answering them as well Remember, this is CAC TV Partnership Week, and this is Legal Thursday, and that is where we end up this particular session. See you after a few hours for yet another discussion on matters to do with commercial laws. But for now, goodbye and good afternoon.